Hello and welcome to CS230. This is lecture 20 and this is lesson one. For this particular session um, I'm going to actually have a single document that I use um, because um, I wanted to give you a, a complete document for creating a RESTful CRUD API using Node.js, Express.js and MongoDB. Now um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work through the sessions and I'm going to um, stop after 10 minutes and then a break and then I'll do the next one so that you don't have to um, um, just watch it all in a single lecture. Okay, so as I mentioned already, we're going to build on from lecture 19 where we talked about RESTful APIs and we're going to so show how we might actually start building these using Node.js, Express.js and, and a MongoDB backend. Of course, you know, you could have a relational database backend if you wanted, but really I want to show you the power of Express.js for building um, the roots associated with a RESTful API model that we looked at the last time. So um, the whole plan then is, um, is to develop this um, create, retrieve, update and delete API um, using this particular setup. You could do it with PHP, you could do it with all sorts of things if you want, but I'm just going to focus on this one here. Okay. We also use, um, show you how you might test your API using Postman and Insomnia and two popular RESTful clients. Okay, so we have seen Express.js already. You may have missed it a little bit, um, but I did use it in a couple of exercises in week seven or week eight. Um, I'll also show you how to use some of the middleware. And Express.js is one of the most popular web frameworks and it's used um, in conjunction with Node.js development. Um, um, and it's an extension of the HTTP module, which we also saw earlier in the, in the module. And again, we've used MongoDB with Node.js and we use specifically the MongoDB module. But the example that we're going to use here in this particular lesson, and series of lessons in fact, would be to use Mongoose, which is an additional um, MongoDB library for use with Node.js. The thing about Mongoose is that it's an object document mapping tool. So an ODM tool for Node.js and MongoDB. And really what this means is that it assists the conversion of JavaScript objects in your Node code into MongoDB documents and vice versa. Lots of information on Mongoose is a really popular, really useful library. You can just check the uh, mongoosejs.com, the guide um, in the docs section. And you can also check out the API specifically if you wish. Like, you know, for example, it provides a, um, a function find by ID and update, for example. You can find all of them um, by just checking the docs. So the order of this, um, uh, JB Monroe, he has a really great introduction to Mongoose for Node.js. So we can go into some detail. Here's the link. And then there's also a really good guide um, by uh, Nick Karnick on the free code camp as well, if you're interested in looking at Mongoose and using Mongoose um, in, your, in your work, in your assignments. Like the two authors take a different approach to using the module. For example, Nick um, Karnick uses JavaScript promises, which I'll be using, and um, Jamie Monroe has a more traditional um, callback, callback model for his. So our example, anyway, will, is going to focus on building a quotations database server implementing some RESTful API. So the API then should allow us facility for creating, searching, editing, and deleting quotations. So the quotations that we're going to use will just have a really simple structure, like the quotation itself and the quotation author. For example, here's one from Emily Dickinson, because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me, the carriage held but just ourselves, and immortality. Okay, so it's a nice quote from, from Dickinson. So we're going to use this and some others um, for working through this particular example. So um, I'm going to be using an, an installed version of MongoDB that I, um, I had created previously. Um, we, uh, we could use the version from Atlas Cloud Cluster if you want. It doesn't matter. As long as you've got DB some MongoDB and you have the password authentication for it, you should be fine. Okay. If, for example, you didn't use MongoDB, um, now's your chance to learn. And if you didn't use Node.js because you focused on PHP development, you're going to have to install Node.js. And again, I've shown you how to do those in earlier lessons, um, and as I have done for setting up MongoDB. Okay, so, so that's a little bit about the background stuff. So first thing we need to do then, is let's talk about our quotations database. So we saw our Dickinson quote up here. So um, we want to think of a model for that. Okay. So really, when we think about it, the model in our MongoDB database, um, it's going to be a simple two-field record that includes the quotation and the author. And so they're going to be collated into a collection called quotations. Okay? And remember, we're using the, the, the plural forms of these as recommended in the lecture 19. Okay? 
So we can represent this using the JSON or, you know, it's PSON if you want. Okay, so the quotation, colon, because of, and the quote, and the author, Emily Dickinson. It's very simple and really we want to keep it simple for the purposes of this particular um, learning exercise. Okay, so um, something that's useful to note that this is our, our, our document architecture. This is our, you know, we can say that the schema associated with this really is, um, you know, you have a, a key and a string, a key and another string. Okay, and um, we can actually represent the content organizationally and stylistically with some user interface later. And we'll see that in, in the next week's lectures, okay? So this is about the separation of content, structure, and presentation. That's really important for web development. It's been key right through the course. So for example, we could, you know, have, even though we have this fixed um, structure for our, our JSON here, you know, we could actually display the data in lots of different ways, you know, different quotations, emphasis, and so forth, and reorganizing. So this is the style and presentation versus structure and content here. So really, our application at this stage of the REST API is really only concerned with giving you the quotation structure, the JSON and nothing else. And we look at the user interface options a little bit later. If we wanted, of course, we could expand the quotations database by adding other categories or topics. We could say, for example, have a category and say that this particular um, quotation from Dickinson is a literary quotation. And we could have this one from Darth Vader. Um, and no, I'm not your father would be in the category for movies. So we could, of course, you know, and then we could make it more detailed, including references to the sources. For example, the Emperor Strikes Back for this correct version of the Darth Vader quote. He didn't say, Luke, I am your father. Um, and of course, the Emily Dickinson's poem, because I could not stop with that. So there's lots of endless potential for experimentation and play, and you could have a look at that. So one thing I wanted to do as well is I wanted you to realize that you're going to have to up your game a little bit with your JavaScript in order to be to, to make life easy. Now, in fact, these, these code using Express.js and Mongoose is very readable, but you, have to, you do need to actually understand how it all works. And it's possible to copy and paste and make changes with it, I suppose, but you know, at, at a deep level, you know, we're all learners, um, we need to um, revisit this, and we don't all remember this all the time. So, so what's important is that the rest of the API code uses promises. And promises are a way, and, and this might be new for some people, of course, um, um, this is a way of handling and dealing with asynchronous callbacks. It also uses the file arrow notation, and we've seen this before. In fact, we've seen me use some promises as well, but I didn't talk too much about it. I'd certainly recommend um, the article from, uh, from MDN, and Mozilla, the developer network on promises, and, and you could have a look at it. But the summary really is, a promise is an object representing the eventual completion or failure of some asynchronous operation. So what's happening is that we're going to be consuming already created promises in the Mongoose modules, so I'm going to talk about the consumption of the return promises. So, so read the MDN article, please, and to get a full detail on how to create them. You don't need to do it for this module, but you know you might need it for interviews or for work or your own work. So promises really are all about gracefully dealing with chained asynchronous function. And we've seen this. We've heard me talk about callback hell, callback hell over the, in the past as well. So essentially, a promise is a returned object to which you can attach callbacks instead of passing the callbacks into some function. So let's say you have an asynchronous uh, function um, called do something. It takes a single object parameter called with parameter and has two associated callback functions. And you've seen this kind of thing over and over again. One for success and one for, for, for when some error occurred, let's call it failure. So, you know, you can set up a callback function here, function success, and it'll log success. And it has a parameter result, uh, function failure, error console that like log the error, error again. And, um, and so you do something with these parameters and you attach these callback functions. And we've seen this over and over again, okay? So modern JavaScript functions that return promises allow you to rewrite this as do something with parameter, then success comma failure, okay? So it's a really nice way of saying, you know, um, of um, it essentially makes the, the, the function thenable, okay? So and that's just another way of saying, you know, create a promise with something, uh, do something, because we know it returns a promise, and then with that promise, we just say then, and we execute um, success or failure, depending on the callback. So the use of then in the code, it returns a new promise and it allows this chaining of asynchronous functions. So that's the key bit for us, the chaining of the functions. The arguments to then are optional, catch, and then we can also use a catch for failure, and that's just a short for then or failure, okay? So we can do something like this. Do something, then do something else, then do a third thing, then finally do something, and then catch for failure, if we wish. So it's a nice way of chaining our asynchronous functions. 
So it means that we will wait, essentially, we, we, we will continue, and then we'll do something when it happens, so we know what to do when it happens. So we can use the fat arrow notation, so you'll see this um, result do something else, do something, then depending on the result, do something else, then we get a new result, then do something else, a third thing, and then do the final thing, and then we call back. So actually, it's possible to have another then after this catch as well, by the way. But, um, you know, we don't have to write it out just now. And also remember that this fat arrow notation, result brackets, fat arrow, um, this function expression here, a uh, bunch of statements here, and all of this, on all of this, we've seen these before, and they're function expressions, okay? And they don't bind to their own this arguments or super or new the target. And they're always anonymous. Okay, so um, um, the arrow function expressions are really well suited for non-method functions. They can't be used as constructors. So you could think of the latter as just being a replacement for function, rec, res, uh, and the statements, but it's a bit more complex than that. But we're going to use this when we develop our RESTful API in the following sections. Okay, we leave it just there for now.